Okay, so today we are going to be replacing the connecting rod and wrist pin in this HPI 15E. Uh, this engine has a new crankshaft, new crankshaft bearings, new piston and sleeve. I was able to find like <clears throat> the last remaining parts for it kicking around. Uh, so we're gonna do or we're gonna do that now. Uh, I have the pull starter removed. I'm sure you guys know how to do that by now. So we're going to remove the other screw. It holds a pull starter on, or back I should say. Make sure that gasket is still there because if it's not, you get an air leak and you don't want that. Okay, next we're also going to remove the cylinder head. I've already loosened off most of these screws so you can, I can save you the painstaking process of watching me do that. And get into this in a second here. There's two versions of this engine. There's a 15E, which is this one. There's a 15FE, which had that funny extra casting in the bottom for the RS4 engine or RS4 RC cars and stuff like that. Okay, so there's our cylinder head removed. Make sure your head gasket's still in there because if you lose that, it's not good. I'm going to remove the piece of tissue I had stuck in there. Next, we're going to remove the cylinder sleeve put that over there and then we have our connecting rod and piston assembly in here so we're going to remove that like so and I'm going to be cleaning all these parts off with uh, brake parts cleaner because um, I do not have any rubbing alcohol left unfortunately I ran out. I'm going to have to go pick some up. I'm actually going to see if there's a place where I can buy a gallon of it. I usually get mine up to save on foods here in Canada, but they they look at you really funny when you buy more than one bottle for some reason. Okay, so we know the piston points that way in the engine. So we're going to make sure that we get our connecting rod the right, right way around. So the taper faces in. Actually, this is tapered on both sides. Huh, interesting. Might not be able to focus on that, but it's tapered on both sides. But what we're gonna do, even though this is a brand new part, is we're gonna, you never know what's been sitting in the package with it. So we're gonna take a Q-tip, we're gonna clean out everything on here and make sure everything's nice and clean because you don't want any kind of gunge or funny stuff going on that's not supposed to be there any kind of dirt or corrosion remember these parts are almost 20 years old yeah i think we're good there so i'm just going to give that another little shot make sure that's nice and clean don't use brake cleaner inside your house unless you have a fire extinguisher i do not but i'm careful enough not to blow up my house in the wrist pin, you're also going to clean the piston again. With any kind of stuff that was on there, fingerprints, whatever. And we're also going to give the sleeve an extra little clean up too. You can never be too clean when it comes to this stuff. Okay, more paper towel here. Okay, so clean working space. We're going to take our piston, which is new, and we're going to get our new parts ready, get that stinky brake clean rag out of here. We're going to remove the old wrist pin. It doesn't look that bad, but why bother take the chance, right? Or why take the chance or whatever. Okay, so we're going to look at this whole situation here. The old one has... Papers on both sides, so I don't think it matters which goes which which side goes where, so I'm not gonna worry about it. We're going to take some castor oil. This is what I like to use to assemble my engines with, and we're gonna put some here. Some in 
the piston pin holes on the piston because lubrication is good. We're going to take our wrist pin, if I can grab it, it's super oily. We're going to slide that through like that. So there we go, new piston and um, wrist or new connecting rod and wrist pin. Sorry, make sure there's no foreign nonsense stuck to anything. Make sure everything's super clean. I'm actually just going to give this one more little spray down and a wipe off just to make sure there's nothing foreign on there because the last thing you want to do is scratch anything. Okay. So there's our piston and rod assembly. Now we're going to put a drop of oil inside of the crank or the connecting rod. Because those are a very high stress part. We're going to put some on the crank pin too because why not? And we're also going to put a little bit on the piston. Some people might go, oh, you're using too much oil. Yeah, well, it's my engine. I'll put whatever oil I want on it within reason. So the side with a hole faces the side away from the exhaust port like that. Let's see on the frame here. So that side with a hole in the piston faces the opposite to the exhaust port. So now we're going to see if we can drop... Oops, let's see here. I'm trying to do this while getting it in a frame and trying to see what I'm doing all at the same time is not really that easy. Okay, there we go. That's back on. Going back off again. There, okay. Piston and connecting rod are together and in. Doesn't hurt to put a little, let me know if I'm in frame here, a little bit of oil on the outside, just to help it go any easier. A little bit on the inside of the sleeve. And we're gonna look, there should be a notch. Okay, there's the notch, the line. You're gonna line that up with the notch in the cylinder. And start trying to line everything up. You don't ever wanna force any of these parts together. If they won't go together, there might be something wrong with what you're doing. And take your time and if you're careful enough you can maneuver your parts properly now this is hard to do this we'll do it on camera okay we're almost there piston is kind of gone and trying to go in sideways so I'm just gonna push on it just a little bit to line it up not pushing with any kind of force, so I did it again. Today is my, not my day for engines, apparently. Okay, so now our piston and sleeve are ready to go back together. Turn the sleeve and line up the notch in the sleeve with the line in the block. Make sure everything turns free. It won't turn over all the way because it's a brand new piston and sleeve, so there's a lot of pinch there. Everything turns nice. Make sure everything's lined up in your exhaust port. And I don't know if you can see it there, but you can kind of see the line and the notch. If you get those the opposite way around, the engine just won't run, or it won't run very good at all. Make sure those are spot on. There we go. Just getting a little bit off. Okay. Right. So now we're back together. All new internals in this engine. Now we are going to. There's something stuck there. There's a piece of hair. Okay. So now we're going to stick the cylinder head back on. And before I do that, I'm just going to take this as. Uh, you guys have seen me use this before. This is just automatic transmission oil and kerosene mixed together. 
I'm just going to put just a few drops on the threads because you don't want to put steel threads into aluminum dry if you can help it. That's how you strip things out. And with an old engine like this, that there's not really any parts available for, like a block for example, or a cylinder head for that fact, if you strip anything out you kind of screwed yourself unless you have small enough taps to re-tap and re-thread the block. So we're not going all the way down tight, we're just running these down until they're all seated. Gently seated. Then we're going to go about once they're seated, just until the screwdriver stops. Don't force them down and don't over torque these. They don't need to be crazy tight, but they need to be tight enough. And if you over tighten them and you strip out your block, you're going to have a head leak or a head gasket leak there, and your engine will, may never run again or run properly for that fact. Okay, so there is the cylinder head back on, and now we're going to put the back plate back on. Don't need to put any oil on this, I'm sure there's enough on there already. So there's a notch in the back plate. I'm going to line that up with a crankshaft pin. This isn't dirty by the way, it's just stained, because it's old. So we're going to line those up, make sure their gasket's still there, make sure it's not ripped or torn. They should slip. You should be able to turn the engine over with a one-way shaft like that. You should see the piston moving. Next, we're going to take our screws and give them a dab of oil. I already explained why we're doing that. I replace these later on with Allen cap screws because I hate Phillips screws with a passion. I think they're probably one of the worst, worst screws ever made. They strip very easy. And especially with these uh, old Japanese engines, as uh, David uh, would know. I can't remember what your last name is, man, but your videos are awesome. I'm going to see if I can put a link in the description to his videos. He's a wicked RC engine mechanic. If you want to go and check out his channel, I'll see if I can... Maybe even do a shout out and write his name down on a piece of paper or something like that. You guys like watching people tear apart engines and putting them back together. He's great. I'm terrible with names, so forgive me, like I said. So, like I said, you don't want to go crazy tight. You just want to snug them. Make sure they're tight enough. There's no binding. Everything turns free. We're going to replace our pull starter. Back on there like so, and do up the screws. All four. Trying to make sure all the screws are the same length. Try to avoid using shit like wood screws. I like to, I've seen lots of wood screws in engines and things like that. Try to always use the proper type of fastener. Okay. And there we go, all put back together, tons of compression, and stick your little paper wedge back in the exhaust port like that to keep any moisture or anything foreign from getting in there. I also have one in there. You guys will see a video of this engine running, uh, I'm not sure when, but there will be one. Uh, stay tuned. And, uh, right on.